The Monty Hall problem is probably one of the most controversial and confusing topics in programmability. If you have ever browsed Reddit threads or mapped forums about it, you have likely seen heated debates, passionate arguments, and people absolutely refusing to believe the correct answer, even after seeing the math. The basic setup of the game is simple. You are on a game show and you are asked to pick one of the three doors. Behind one door is a car and behind the other two door, goods. After you pick a door, say door number one, the host, who knows what's behind every door, opens one of the remaining two doors and reveals a good, say door number three. You are then asked, do you want to stay or switch your choice to door number two? Most people say, it's two doors now, it doesn't matter, why switch, it's 50-50 now, but that's not actually true. Mathematically, switching gives you a two-third chance of winning while staying only gives you one-third. Sounds crazy, right? And that's exactly why people argue about it all the time. For me, it started to make sense when my professor explained it in class, but even though the math checked out, I'm also a programmer, and I really wanted to see it in action. So I decided to write a C++ program to simulate the game and test the results for myself. Then I went further and built a general version with more than three doors, just to see how wild the probabilities could get. This video walks you through both three-door classic and the generalized version using interactive games and simulations. So let's go. Before diving into the test results and outputs, it's important to understand what Monty Hall problem predicts mathematically. In the classic three-door version, when a player initially picks a door, there is one-third chance that they have chosen the car, and two-third chance that car is behind one of the other two doors. After Monty, who knows where the car is, opens one of the other doors to reveal a good, the probability doesn't split evenly between the new remaining two doors. Instead, the full two-third probability shifts to the other unopened door. Thus, if a player decides to stay with the original choice, their chance of winning remains one-third. However, if they switch, their chance of winning jumps to about two-third, about 66%. This is what makes the Monty Hall problem so counterintuitive and controversial. The solution would be more intuitive with more doors rather than just three. In the generalized version, we have n doors, and the same logic extends. The probability that the player initially picks the car is 1 over n, and the probability that the car is behind one of the other doors is n minus 1 over n. After Monty opens all possible good doors, leaving only two doors unopened, the player faces the same choice, stay or switch. If the player switches in the generalized case, the probability of winning becomes n minus 1 over n. For example, with 10 doors, switching wins approximately 90% of the time, with 100, approximately 99% of the time. In contrast, if the player stays with the original choice, their chance of winning stays at just 1 over n. So the takeaway is clear. As the number of doors increases, switching becomes an even stronger strategy. The simulations in the next section will put this theory to test. To test Monty Hall problem properly, I wrote four C++ programs. Two for the classic three-door version and two for a more general version that works with any number of doors. The full source code for this project, including all four C++ programs, is available on my GitHub. Feel free to clone it, fork it, test the code, or run your own simulations as I walk you through the demonstration. This file is the interactive version where you actually play the game with three doors. You pick a door, Monty reveals a good, and then you decide whether to switch. It prints out the result and lets you keep playing. Okay. Let's actually play the Monty Hall game right now, just once. We have got three doors. I'm going to pick door one. Monty, who knows where the car is, opens door three and it's a goal. Now he asks me, do I want to stay with door one or switch to door two? Since theory says switching gives me a total chance of winning, I'm going to switch. And I got a goal. Wait, what? Didn't we just say switching was better? Here's the thing. This is probability. It doesn't guarantee a win every time. It gives you a better odds over many rounds. That's why we can't judge based on just one game. You have to play over and over again to see the true pattern. 
This exact phenomena is a part of why Monty Hall problem became so famous. Many people just could not accept the math. In fact, when Marilyn first published the correct answer in her parrot column in 1990, she received thousands of letters, many from PhDs and mathematicians insisting she was wrong. Years later, when computers advanced, simulations and experiments proved it right. It's just that our intuition doesn't always line up with the probability. This kind of misunderstanding is known as waste state neglect. People tend to ignore the original odds and focus only on the apparent 50-50 choice after a good is revealed. But Monty's knowledge and actions actually shift the probabilities. I played this game 10 times and you can see the results. So in the next section, I'm going to run our simulations. Thousands of games played automatically and we will see if switching really wins more often. This program runs thousands of simulations automatically. You get to choose how many and shows the win rate if you always switch versus if you always stay. Say I want to run 100,000 simulations and this is the result. Switching wins 66% of the time as expected. This is where things really start to get interesting. You are no longer limited to just three doors. Now you get to pick how many doors you want to play with. For this run, I choose 10 doors. After I pick one, Monty open 8 of the remaining doors, all goods, of course, that leaves me with 2 unopened doors, my original pick and one another. Now, it's the same question again, do I stay or do I switch? Well, theoretically, the probability of winning by switching in this case is 90%, so yes, I switch and boom, we got a car. Of course, it won't always land on the car every single time, but as you keep playing, you'll start seeing the pattern. The probability stacks in favor of switching. You can run this game as many times as you want and you will see, switching just wins more often. Just like the three door simulations, this one runs automated tests but with any number of doors, you get to choose how many doors. Now let's automate that logic. The file is designed to run simulations with any number of doors. 10, 100, even 1000 and tell you exactly how often switching wins. For example, let's run it with 10 doors and switching wins 90% of the time. And now with 100 doors, switching wins 99% of the time. This is where the map becomes crystal clear. When you have 100 doors, switching wins almost every time because the odds of randomly picking the correct door in the beginning are very low. It's almost like Monty is handling you to the right door. You just have to trust the man and switch. Each file is short, clean and does one thing well. I separated them on a purpose to make it easy to compare the classic version and the generalized one. I also created a combined and well-documented version of the program that lets you choose any of the four modes from a single entry point. Whether you want to play the game or run simulations, you just select an option and off you go. If you are interested in deeper dive into why Monty Hall solution works, I highly recommend reading the Wikipedia article on the Monty Hall problem. It features some of the clearest explanations from top mathematicians over the world. For example, Dr. Adams explains it like Monty is saying in effect you can keep your one door or you can have the other two door so the two third chance of winning doesn't disappear it just collapses into the remaining unopened door so why do many people still get this wrong if you also got this wrong the first time don't worry you are not alone a famous study showed that only 13 percent of the people choose to switch and even Nobel physicists have confidently insisted the problem was 50-50 and criticized those who said otherwise. Why? Because this isn't just about not knowing math or probability. It's also a cognitive illusion. According to this Wikipedia article, the typical behavior of not switching can be explained by several well-known psychological effects. We naturally tend to overvalue the option we already chose simply because we feel it ours. In psychological terms, it's called endowment effect. And also we feel more comfortable sticking with our initial decision even when switching is a better choice. It's called status quo bias. Finally, we have omission bias, where people often prefer to make mistakes by doing nothing rather than taking action, switching. And the funny thing, visions do better than we do.
When exposed to this problem, typically, peasants learn to switch every time. They don't overthink. They just go with what works and their habit. What started as a strange little game, so puzzle turned out to be a deep dive into probability, psychology, and human intuition. I wrote four C++ programs, simulated hundreds of thousands of games, and even played a few myself. And every time, the message was the same, switching wins. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video background, hit like, subscribe, or drop a comment with your thoughts or questions. Until next time, keep questioning, keep coding, and if this ever happens in real life, you know what to do. Switch.